Hello everyone and welcome back to another PCB overview video. Today on the Radeon HD 6970 Lightning from MSI. So this is another of the um, sort of overclocking purpose built graphics cards that you can get from MSI. It, the Lightning series doesn't really exist anymore. There was a 2080 Ti Lightning but that was um, pretty disappointing. Um, however, there was a 1080 Ti Lightning that was pretty good. Um, but this is a lot older than a 1080 Ti. This is from around, um, like the NVIDIA equivalent of this, I would say, is the GTX 480 and 580. Um, back when, yeah, the Lightning cards were really, really good. <laughs> and this is one of them. So, uh, let's take a look at the PCB here. And as always, we're gonna start with our vCore VRM, which is over here. So our vCore VRM is a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen phase, controlled by this controller over here, which is where we get the first roadblock. Because this UP1981A uh, has no data sheet that I was able to find. So there's nothing I can say about the controller other than its name. Um, it's probably a 7 or 8 phase controller because there was no 14 phase controller at the time. So um, it's using these uh, doublers over here, which I actually do not remember the part number of, I'm sorry. Um, but basically it's using these doublers over here. So we're taking seven PWM signals and doubling them into 14. Um, and on a bunch of Radeon cards, you, um, at least in the HD 7000 series, which is newer than this, uh, you had a lot of cards that were using the CHA8228G, which is a dual output eight phase controller. So you would see things where, uh, for example, six or seven phases were vCore, and then there's one phase or sometimes two phases of VDDCI being controlled by the same controller. Um, so yeah. So yeah, but because I couldn't find a data sheet, I can only say that most likely this one is taking seven PWM signals and turns it into 14 with the help of some doublers. Um, so yeah, so the VCOR VRM itself is using some discrete MOSFETs and in each phase you have one high side and one low side MOSFET and the high side MOSFET is an IR6721. I hope that's the right one. And the low side MOSFET is an IR6725. Um, if I'm not confusing these two right now. So, uh, yeah. Oh, wait, did I confuse these? No, 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 uh, I, I did it right. So the 6721 has, um, has 5.1 uh, milliohms of RDS on at uh, 10 volts. And the IR6725 has 1.7 milliohms of RDS on at 10 volts. Which is pretty good. Like 1.7? That's pretty good. Like, yeah, you could always lower it by having two low side MOSFETs because that would half the RDS on. And a lot of cards did that, except these Lightning cards, because one of these MOSFETs is already very, very good. Because the low RDS on is not even um, what these IR Direct FETs, which is the package that they have. As you can see, it's not just a normal black plastic box. This is actually um, has a metal. Uh, casing around it and that metal is actually used to conduct uh, uh, electricity um, so yeah your heatsink has to be insulated otherwise you would be shorting out your v-core um, uh, but yeah uh, now I need to find the uh, continuous drain current that is so the continuous drain current of the 6721 high side at 20, no, let's go for ambient, 25 degrees 
ambient temperature, which is the test is done with a, like the MOSFET and there's no cooling on it whatsoever and the ambient is 25 degrees. Uh, in that state it can handle 14 amps, which is not that much, but like this is a high side MOSFET, so it only sees 12 volts. So 14 times 12, that's what each phase can handle. That's a lot. And then for the 6725, uh, in the same state, the continuous drain current is 28 amps, which is a bit low. So 28 times 14, that still gives you a fairly high total current, that would be 392 amps. Um, but the thing is, uh, these IR direct fits have a characteristic that they... Um, so basically, let's just uh, do that. So let's say uh, amps over here as in current and then degrees Celsius over here as in temperature. Th their curve basically looks like this. So, no, not, not even like this, it's like even worse, it's like this. So, um, if you cool them down, they gain an insane amount of uh, current handling. So, at 25 degrees ambient, with no cooling whatsoever on it, this low side does 28 amps. Um, at 25 degrees case temperature, so that means not the air around the MOSFET is at 25 degrees, no, the MOSFET casing itself is at 25 degrees, which is probably a bit colder than what the card is, than, that, than what it's usually at in terms of temperature in normal operations, but I would think that this number that I'm about to give you is closer to the real world than the 28 amp figure I just gave you. So, uh, let's just say TA and T case. So T case 25 degrees, this MOSFET can handle 170 amps. So yeah, it does become pretty ridiculous. And then even for a couple milliseconds for pulse drain current, it can even handle 220. So yeah, um, that's kind of the thing for these IR direct fits. They have a, like, fairly low RDS on and a very, very high current handling capability uh, when they are cool enough. And because they have this exposed metal part that is their conductor, they're also p pretty easy to cool down. Um, you don't have to go through like a layer of plastic uh, casing. So, yeah. Um, so that's why they've been a pretty popular choice for some higher-end uh, graphics cards. Also, just uh, AMD used them on the uh, on their reference cards for a while, um, just because they are pretty nice for efficient VRMs. Because uh, where you would need two low sides, you can just use one side, uh, one low side from uh, of these. So you can save yourself uh, paying for another MOSFET by just using uh, one of these. So of course they're a bit more f expensive and. Um, but yeah, like, these MOSFETs are pretty good, is what I'm trying to say. Um, yeah. So let's take a look at the output filter, actually. And this card has a fairly, yeah, lightning-esque output filter, so that's the output filtering part. And some of these capacitors were soldered on manually by Salty Croissant, who sent this card to me. Um, but most of these come with the card. I, I, I think he sold it on these uh, manually and m this one might be manual uh, and maybe these two. Uh, I'm not entirely sure <laughs> but even then um, there are a lot of um, SMD aluminum polymer capacitors that this card comes with. Um, and, well, they vary, depending on which ones were uh, manually soldered, they vary in size. So, these two over here, which are actually tantalums, um, these are 470 microfarads. Uh, these right here are also 470 microfarads. These are 330 microfarads. Uh, and then, and then for, for these, it's kind of hard to, to tell. <laughs> um, the point is, there's a lot of capacitors, a lot more than you would see on a usual card, and then there's the back, where there's even more of them, including these four prodlizers. 
So a prodlizer capacitor is a is a type of capacitor that's not really being used anymore these days because they tended to die. Um, like basically they have pretty pretty bad endurance. Um, I think the highest rating you can find them in is a thousand hours, which is very low compared to other capacitors. So these are not being made anymore, um, which is kind of sad because these. Um, were really, really, really good at filtering a lot of different frequencies. So these were really, really good at uh, output filtering uh, and suppressing transients. So yeah, basically a, lo a lot of the older lightning cards use these. For example, the GTX 580 and 480 lightning also have four of these in their VRM. Um, and then just surrounded by even more SMD aluminum polymer capacitors. Some motorized ceramics thrown in there as well for just for good measure, I guess. And um, actually, I think this part is even is actually memory. Like this entire like this prodlizer, the, the fourth one is actually belonging to the memory. I think at least that's uh, the case on the GTX 580 Lightning. Um, but yeah, so this has a fairly insane output filter, um, which I really like. I I like. There's no such thing as too much capacitance. So the more I can get, the happier I am. Um, so yeah. Uh, and let's also look at the other rails. So here we have also a typical lightning um, thing. We have a three-phase memory VRM uh, controlled by a controller that I actually could find a data sheet for. So um, this is a... UP6207 and well it's a three phase uh, controller with up to one megahertz switching frequency which is so high you're never gonna use it actually. Um, but yeah this one has a publicly available data sheet so modding memory on this is fairly easy. Uh, core not so much. Um, but yeah and then because this is an AMD card we also have a one phase uh, DCI. Did I actually mark any of the other ones? I did not. Sorry for that. Vcore. Vmem. Um, so yeah. And that's basically it for the uh, smaller rails. Like that is probably a minor rail that's uh, probably 1.8 volts. There's yeah, there should be a 1.8 volts rail on here. There should also be a... Uh, yeah, there's an LD over here. That probably supplies, I think, either 5 or 7 volts for the IR direct feds uh, for their gate drive. Um, there's another LDO over here, which I actually don't know what it does. Maybe it's a 5 volt controller. There should also be a PEX rail somewhere here. Um, maybe this LDO is the PAX rail. I don't really know the 6000 series. Um, but, uh, yeah. So that's the minor rail. So let's also look uh, into some of the more lightning features. So this being a card meant for overclocking, it does come with some pretty nice overclocking focused features. So the first of them is they do actually give you voltage read points. They're not very accurate, um, but they help. Uh, they can give you a general idea of where your voltages are at. However, I wouldn't really use them for exactly measuring um, the exact voltage, say, behind the core. Like, if, if, you, if you go behind the core and connect your probe directly to one of these motor layer ceramics behind the core, you're gonna get a much more uh, precise voltage measurement than uh, using these read points, but they're still a nice uh, includement. Uh, then over here we have a BIOS switch, and this one actually has this should be triple BIOS, but at least the switch has three states you can push it into. And I mean, here's a BIOS chip looking thing, uh, and and here are more two more BIOS chip looking things, and here's even a fourth BIOS looking uh, BIOS chip looking thing. However, I think this is a minor uh, voltage rail. The last thing I marked, I think that's another minor rail. Um, yeah, and uh, do we actually? I'm not fairly sure. I'm not entirely sure. 
but um, we have some more things. So here we have a phase indicator for all of the VCOR phases that the card has. Um, basically, yeah, if, if there's a problem with a phase, uh, the LED will turn off. Um, and then, at least on the GTX 580 Lightning, uh, you had a thing where like half the phases would be lit green and the other half would be lit red. And by installing some driver software, you could like, when idle, turn off the red phases so the card would be more efficient. Um, but like for overclocking, that doesn't really do much because you don't really care about your idle power consumption. Um, and then we also have some um, switches on the card. So you can say how it says memory voltage switch, GPU voltage switch, PWM clock tuner and OCP unlocker. So the first two just in um, at least so I haven't really run this card yet because I don't have a VRM heatsink for it and I'm still looking for something that I can replace it with. Um, but basically what these switches did on the 580 lightning is just add in an offset to these two voltages. Um, so basically you get higher voltage. Uh, and then PWM clock tuner probably just raises the switching frequency and then OCP unlocker well di disables the overcurrent protection. Um, so there's that. And I actually haven't paid that close attention to the PCB. I'm kind of sorry for that. Um, one thing that's on the GTX 580 Lightning is that MSI included some little PCB markings um, where it says VR ready with a, with an arrow pointing to uh, a resistor, which is actually them marking um, you the point where you can hook up a potentiometer to then uh, volt mod the card. And yeah, like if you ask me, that's really nice. So that, I think it's either because they know you can't really find a data sheet for this controller or maybe they're just really, really nice. Um, yeah, basically they tell you, oh, uh, hook up your potentiometer here. So you don't really have to look up the data sheet. For example, I do not have a data sheet for the VCAR PWM controller for the GTX 580 Lightning either, um, but I was able to vault mod that because it has that marking. Um, which is really, really nice. So I, I am not entirely sure if this card also has it. it. It's a very small marking and just in there, all the things that were I wrote over. Um, but this card might have it, um, but I, I don't really know. Um, but yeah, so this is the Radeon HD 6970 Lightning um, PCB overview. So, I, did I actually forget to... Why did I not mark this fade? I don't know. Anyway. Uh, oh no, I shifted the entire... F yeah, I, I, I see what happened. I, I accidentally, like... Yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I accidentally put the, the image to, towards the left. Um... Actually, that's a bit too far. Yeah. Okay, it's... It's being kind of stupid. It's not letting me align it properly. So, anyway. Uh, yeah. I guess this is the point where uh, the YouTube begging starts. So, like, subscribe, and share if you want. And thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, goodbye.